There's also a really cool thing you can research. Uh, let's see if I can see it right now. No, tactical HUD. But basically, it's a, an emergency generator, and it costs a ton of industry. But it lets you build in one of those giant module slots and power a room. So even if you don't have dust, even if you don't have like a link of rooms to it, you can just have this one room in the middle of nowhere with the generator, with the lights on, build a bunch of towers, and just try and hold out from there. You do, um, you get to keep how much, uh, like your stockpile, but every floor you're gonna have to rebuild, you know, your industry generators, your uh, science machines, etc. Which is a bit frustrating, but <clears throat> it adds to the tension every level. You also have inventories. Um, each character has a, a background. Uh, of course, their own active skills and passive skills that when you reach certain levels, they unlock. And they all have different inventory slots. Now, the standard you'll see is a weapon, armor, and a device. And Max here uses handguns. Um, armor is all the same. Anyone can use any armor. And anyone can use any device. However, Rakia here, she uses a machine gun, armor, and a device. Now, these characters are standard. But you'll get characters, for example, um, Golgi is one of my favorites. She She's kind of like this little, like person who thinks she's a spider and she runs really fast and she can slow things down and she has access to um, armor and then two devices she can't use a weapon uh, so it's kind of interesting so she tends to have less like damage than people but she's got a lot more utility because she can bring devices that say like a surviving kit gives you some extra wit five defense two health regen and lets you repair things. You know, so you kind of use devices to fill the holes in your team. Like right now, we don't have anyone that does a lot of damage. <laughs> um, that was my fault, really. I didn't didn't bring one with me, but uh, I was kind of hoping to find one in the dungeon. So at some point, we might try and swap Max out for one. Just because I'm a huge fan of the Doctor. Racky is awesome, and uh, can't go wrong with having a nurse around, so. One of the um, awesome things about this game is you can any time just zoom out and just see the whole floor. I like to sort of play the game zoomed in, watch what's going on, switch between characters. Uh, there's hotkeys for a lot of things. However, um, my girlfriend goes to bed somewhere around like 11 o'clock, 11.30. So um, yeah, that's correct. Uh, the doors basically activate the next turn. It's equivalent to if you're playing Civilization, hitting the end turn button. But um, anyway, so I, I play with the lights off, so sometimes I have trouble with my keyboard. <laughs> hitting the right button it's, uh, causes me trouble. So a lot of times you'll see me clicking. Uh, I apologize if it's inefficient or bothers you or whatever. Uh, depends what I'm doing. But yeah, so each uh, door is a new turn. And um, well, there's our exit right down here. So we're going to try and get our crystal, which is this giant C on the map, all the way down here without getting killed. So that uh, should be, should be alright. Yeah, so um, you have a speed stat here, and that's how fast your character runs. So we go, Josh is kind of slow. Raki is really slow right now because she's wearing a machine gun and a t-shirt. Game's filled with tons of uh, pun humor. Uh, so, it's not a t-shirt, it's a titanium shirt. It's a bit of the joke there. So, they have a lot of things which might throw you off at first. Because I've definitely 
passed up a t-shirt the first time I saw it because I was like, uh, well, don't really need that. I'd rather take like the, um, you know, the armor here, like the used chitin, or chitin, sorry, is how it's pronounced. But, um, what can you do? So, I think... Alright, so what happened there is the enemy... <laughs> well, what happened there is I was talking and I let Max die, which is terrible. I'm probably going to replace him anyway. Yeah, I know. Instead of tear gas, it's tear gas. I honestly, I don't mind it. Um, a lot of times, I find it funny, but uh, it's it's just one of those things where it's like because your brain is so used to thinking in one way, um, you sort of don't understand what an item does unless you read it. So. So when a hero dies, that's it. They're gone. Uh, game over, man. <laughs> uh, hopefully you can get a new one. Um, in this case... Alright. Um, and then, yeah, it, it does like a little flashing warn-up. This is down here. Um, like a chat log, basically. So I have three incoming waves. So we just have to defend for a little bit here. I'm gonna run Rack in this room. She's an ability that's overclocked. It makes all the minor modules in a room deal 50% extra damage for time. So all these guys are just gonna shoot a little harder. Let's see what we can research. Um, if you're ever in, yeah, it's okay. Um. Honestly, I'm really, uh, I get a bit tired. I, I do about like a 10 hour shift, and then it's about three hours um, both ways. Well, it's an hour and a half there, an hour and a half back on the bus. So I get home, and then I just want to like sit down, just chat with some people on the internet, play a couple games, and because I play a lot of uh, roguelikes, I, I do tend to, tend to die a lot, because I'm uh, not putting my whole uh, game face on. Crystal edition. Uh, let me just double check that. Dungeon of the Endless. Um. Is that the one? Yes, I uh, I did buy the Crystal edition. I will say, I pre-ordered the game. And I do own a lot of other Amplitude games. And the cool thing about Amplitude is buying the Super Edition, if you will, the more expensive one, does give you um, items and stuff with um, all their other games. So, for example, it unlocks the Vaulters in Endless Legend, and uh, also in Endless Space, it unlocks the Vaulter Faction. Um, so that's kind of why... I did that. Do I think it's worth? Was it twenty-two dollars right now? That's tough. Um, I really hate making that call. Normally, what I do is a dollar per game. That's kind of my thing, or a dollar per hour. <laughs> Sorry. So if I get twenty-two hours out of this game done, I'm very happy with it. Uh, right now, I think I'm at seventeen, maybe a little more. So to me, it's worth it, but. Yeah, I'm at 20 hours, so there you go. But it's one of those things, if you don't think you can put in 20 hours into this game, um, it's probably not worth it. I'm not saying the game's not great, I'm, I'm just saying that's just... Oh yeah, I've used Green Man Gaming. I, they're, they're pretty awesome. The big problem is, like, now there's so many stores, it's like, who do I buy from half the time? I'm never sure. There's just so many sales going on at one point. Um, the Humble Bundle has a store now, too, which is, it, <laughs> it's one of those things, like, you want to have, like, email notifications for all these stores, 
And then you get to a point where it's like, I just have so many emails coming in. I don't know what's going on. But... So for $16, for sure, I'd, I'd grab it. Hey, Kensha. Oh, see, I have to apologize for my uh, ignorance. Um, but anyway, there was a hero we just found. The amount it costs to recruit them is based on their level. And Kensha is kind of a cool guy. I've never gotten him. I got him in the uh, the early access. So I'll see if he's any better now. Or she, rather. Um, I'm going to level them up war phase. Okay. Alright, so... I'm going to give Hikensha our rapier here. And they're actually our fastest person, so... I'm going to have them throw on this armor. Now, what I, I tend to do in this game... Um, I don't really read a lot on roguelikes, so I might sound a little uninformed. I apologize here. Just because I enjoy exploring and finding things out. But I basically broke down the th three categories. You have your damage, which is like the tanky kind of guy who just sits there and kills things. You have your operators, which are the people that get operate really early on. Like Josh, like Dina, like Rakia, and also Hikensha. Um, and you just use them as your economy. And if they do other things, that's great. And then you have your runner, which is someone that has a very high speed stat, and you use that because when you pick up the crystal, you slow down a lot. But if you get someone with a high speed stat, you can negate that and just gun it for the exit. So that's kind of what I'm hoping to do here. This is the last door. Uh, on later levels, you want to try and avoid opening all the doors. You just kind of want to run, find the exit, and keep going. But, um... For now... That's not good. Okay, so these enemies just run right past you <laughs> and go straight for your crystal. And when your crystal takes damage, it directly comes out of your money, because that's sort of like your, your life bar in this game is your uh, dust. Because then you, you won't be able to power any rooms. And uh, if you ever run out, game over. Straight up. So, and of course, every time you take damage, you lose dust. And then you can power less rooms and less rooms and less rooms. And it becomes a bit scary. So I'm going to unpower some rooms here and try and get us a clear path to the exit. Which doesn't look like we're going to have. So... I'm going to have Hikensha carry the crystal here. I'll have everybody sit in this room and hopefully uh, defend it. Early on, it's not a bad idea. Oh, I didn't notice that room. That's annoying. But um, the problem is when you get to like the later levels, you're just you're gonna lose more every room than you're gonna gain. So it's better to just run as fast as you can. So right now we're only on floor four, <laughs> so it's not as bad. And now we're just trying to escort the crystal carrier. You can see enemies are just flooding out of everywhere trying to kill us. Oh, Rakia got lagging behind here.
And uh, if the crystal carrier ever dies, that's it, game over. <laughs> so, and if you can get everyone in the exit room, you just click the button, and that's it, you win. So, it's always a nice thing. And Rack is just complaining that she got a blister. Life's hard. She got like 70 kinds of lung cancer, and uh, that blister's what did her in. <laughs> it's a funny thing, uh, one of Rack's active abilities, if you level her up, it's called Health Hazard. And it's basically, uh, smoking's not just bad for you, it's bad for everybody. And it just does, like, damage to all the heroes in the room, and then damage to all the enemies in the room, but more than it does to the heroes. So, it's an AoE, uh, it's definitely a risky gamble, but there's situations where it's very useful. It's just one of those funny things. I love games with flavor text and stuff like that. Um, really cool thing, if you like sort of like hidden stories in games, uh, I won't spoil any, but this game has the elevator talking, and um, like basically when you go up every floor on the elevator, the characters all like have a little bit of a chit chat with each other, maybe complain about the level or whatever. But if you have certain combinations of characters, they reveal more backstory. Um, and if you can get to the end of their story arc by surviving so many floors with those combination of heroes, then they'll get a, um, a buff, probably? Something like that. They, they get some sort of bonus. Uh, it's kind of cool. Pepper Spray 3. Sure. So it's, it's pretty cool. Wow, we got a ton of research going on here. Neurostun module, yes please. So Neurostun module is your standard, like, slow effect. Um, it's probably one of the things you want to have every game. But aside from that, whatever you like. <laughs> Alright, get our industry going. Um, and another thing that'll help you if you do pick this up for your first game, rooms that are lit, which you can always tell by zooming out, they're glowing, or by just seeing the visual effect, enemies will not spawn in lit rooms, and they will also not spawn in rooms that people are standing in. So, what you can do is, if you have some rooms you cannot light up during the crystal, you can have characters stand in them and hopefully block the spawns. Wow, just so much science going on right now. <laughs> so, right now, these artifacts are on top of major module slots, and I might have to bulldoze one. Like, this guy. I'm not sure if we're researching something on him right now. I'll just double check. Because, um, we need to get more economy going, and we already have two research. Yeah. Although, ne Neurostun Module 2 is quite good. So, maybe we'll leave him and we'll bulldoze this one in a couple turns. Just because we need to get more industry going. Food. So I'm trying a new um, research build this time, 
which is getting these things called Pepper Spray. It's basically like a mind control module. And it's kind of cool, actually. I passed it up before because it's like, you know, you have like 90 guys. Well, that's not true, but you have, say, like six enemies enter a room. Is mind controlling one of them really going to help you? I'm still not sold on it, but it does target the most powerful enemy, so... You know, a power suit. 30 defense. Ooh, it's pretty good. Hmm. Alright, so when you find a merchant, merchants will deal with one of the resources randomly. It might be dust, it might be food, it might be industry or science. And so they both buy and sell in that commodity. So right now, Grim Fairy Tales, what this does, gives three wit, which uh, translates to two um, extra, uh, well, it's like one and a half extra resource per turn if you're operating something, which is kind of good. So we're probably going to pick that up. It also gives you Master Hacker, which, um, we'll throw this on uh, Raki here. Master Hacker... It um, makes you repair modules faster, and also your minor modules in the room have higher defense. Because some enemies will attack them. There's a lot of different types of enemies, they all target different things. Um, it's also the same thing. Each tower will target a different enemy. So you can see Prisoner Prods, Priority Target Anti-Hero Monsters. The Tesla Module, Priority Target Anti-Module Monsters. Uh, it's a good idea to pick up a Tesla at some point, just because... If, the, if there are monsters that attack your modules, blow up your towers and stuff, that's terrible. So having a Tesla means they will be getting attacked. Um, so, that's always something. What do we got? Kind of want the power suit. Like, that's a ton of defense, and we can just throw it on somebody, have them defend a room. Maybe on Rakia here. It's a lot of food, but I think I'm going to go for it. Just have maybe this unkillable engineer with a machine gun. I kind of like the sound of it. <laughs> so, we'll throw our t shirt on uh, Hikensha. We're gonna bulldoze the research. What do we need right now? Science would be good, food would be good. Uh, let's get food. So what you, a good strategy, I'm not saying it's the best, but I have one person explore, I go to a new room, I check it out, and then I run all the way back to a room that I set up with like a kill zone, with like a couple of guys or a bunch of modules, and then uh, I just keep doing that over and over. Because um, some heroes can take on whole rooms by themselves, but I have a lot of weak heroes right now, who are just good at like repairing things and that kind of stuff. New item, dehydrated water. Sure. So dehydrated water, it uh, gives HP max and unlocks extenders. And extenders is a passive skill. Heroes on the floor heal cost minus 10% food. That's okay, because anytime you can spend food, five food to heal the hero. Not fully, it does a little bit. You'll end up using that a lot. <laughs> um... My one complaint is there's no way to mouse over what something gives. So, for example, this unlocks extenders. I wish I could, like, somehow have a subtext, like, extenders does this. So when I'm at the shop, I know, hey, extenders is a good thing. In this case, it's not. But for this, I've gotten this floor 12, which, uh, I can't remember if that's the... 
It's either the last or second to last floor. I think 13th is the last floor. Um, and yeah, I think I could have made it, but <laughs> I just, the first time you get to like the last floors, it's, it, they're very different than the previous floors. So I wasn't expecting it. It's kind of like, uh, I don't know if you ever played NetHack, but first time I played NetHack and you get the, uh, the amulet, and then the whole game changes, and you're just like, oh, okay. So there's our exit. We're actually doing really well um, for our, like, industry. We haven't had any trouble with the monsters, so I think I'm going to just uh, keep exploring the floor a little bit. And basically, that's sort of the push your luck thing, is you want to keep exploring... As long as you don't die. <laughs> then when you hit the point you die, you're just like, oh. Made a mistake. Happens. Pepper spray four. Oh, I really want that actually. That is a ton of science. See these these monsters attack modules, so I have to go defend it. Oh. Oh, okay. I mind controlled him. Just weird. Whoa, Raksha, what's going on? No. No, oh, Rakia. My dang. So since we're down Rakia, I'm going to have to keep exploring the floor and hopefully find another uh, hero. Yeah, essentially. Otherwise, it's just sort of like frozen. Oh, I hate these enemies that slow you down. Back in this room, kill thing. No, it didn't. <laughs> oh, hopefully, we kill these. What, Josh? Oh, yeah, he got overrun. Sorry again. I hit a point at night where I just I, I lose focus, and I <sighs> it's like nothing I can do is going to prevent the inevitable. That's all right. I'm probably gonna have to turn in. It was nice talking with you. Any last questions about the game or uh, anything like that? You can see the game over screen if you like. I'm not even sure there is a game over screen. Kind of, kind of just click through it. Oh, there you go. Game over. How many monsters killed? How many doors? And time and score. So you see, my, my best here is floor 12. We got Josh, Golgi, Rakia, and Ken. Uh, which is awesome combination. The game, I love the art to the game as well. Um, I'm not someone to complain about art, if it's bad, but I, I think it's gorgeous. Oh, that's awesome. Well, I hope you have a good time. Um, yeah, for sure. Hey, um, if you ever come back in the stream or... Uh, Leave a, actually, tell you what, just leave a post on Reddit, um, let me know how you, how you like it, and, uh, hey, no problem, man, I, uh, I just love, love, um, 
I don't know. I'm very passionate about things. You know what I mean? And I love sharing my passion with people. So anytime I can get someone else to enjoy something I enjoy, by all means, I'm, I'm having a blast. So you have a nice night. And uh, if you want to stop by sometime, feel free. I'm normally here uh, 12 to 3 after work. So <laughs> take it easy.